All right, so today we did a lab where we saw how light spread out spherically. Um, as you get further and further out, it exponentially decreases in its intensity of light. So just like sound, um, light spreads out spherically and will exponentially decrease. And so uh, when we graphed the light, we saw that the intensity of light dropped off, you know, reverse exponential graph here and um, considerably got less and less and less. So, and it, you know, it's an inverse square function. Now what's nice is this is the exact same equation that we used for sound. Um, this is uh, sound intensity though, or I mean light intensity in lux, which is a watts per meter squared. This is um, light power in, wa in watts. And then R is how far away you are from the light source in meters. So let's practice this one here. Um, go ahead and pause the clip and give this one a try. And then when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so intensity is power divided by four pi r squared. We should get 3.537 watts per meter squared or lux for the intensity of light three meters out. Let's go ahead and try this one from the sun. Um, sun's power is 4.7 times 10 to 25th watts. We have our average distance from the sun here. And on one square meter of Earth, what is the lux? What is the watts per meter squared intensity on Earth? So don't forget to convert here for kilometers to meters. So go ahead and pause the clip, give that a try, and when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so from our conversion, we've got 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. We should get 167.119 watts per meter squared or lux. So we've all seen this with a, uh, a straw in water, and um, we've, we've all seen, you know, the uh, effects of this. Um, this is called refraction when light is bending, and uh, it has to do with the speed at which speed at which the way or the speed at which light passes through uh, air versus uh, uh, or uh, whatever medium that you have or a vacuum. So uh, refraction is the movement of light from one meter to one medium to another. And when that happens, light will bend. And the change in speed is what's happening there as the light bends. And so, um, and it happens at the, uh, the interference between the, the medias. What we have is a ratio between the speed of light in a vacuum and the speed of light in a medium. And that's really what... Uh, Index, the index of refraction is it's a ratio between them. We know the speed of light in the vacuum is the very fastest it can be. It's three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. The speed of light in a medium though, however, is always gonna be slower. So if that's true, if this, the numerator is always gonna be greater than the denominator, then N uh, will always be uh, greater than one. Um, or one if it's just in a vacuum because you'd have three times 10 to the eighth divided by three times 10 to the eighth. But as light slows down, this number on the bottom is going to get smaller. Um, this number always stays the same. And then our index will, uh, will be adjusted based on that. Now, if you look at your data booklet, this is, the, uh, this is what they give you here. Um, they give you a ratio between speeds and they give you a ratio between you know, the angles that we have here. Um, but in terms of the ratio between the indexes, uh, that's something you'll need to remember. So when light slows down, it bends, and um, you know the faster light uh, catches up with the slower, and light bends there. And so um, what happens in, in a medium, the light is, uh, if it cannot be absorbed, it, um, and it cannot match the, the natural frequency within the atom, like a corresponding, uh, you know, a corresponding energy level jump, then uh, it's not remitted. Um, as the same as the same wave, um, and so because of this absorption emission, it takes time, and light uh, light does slow down as it goes through. So in refraction, again, the wavelength uh, shortens, but the frequency stays the same. Um, and what would that mean for the color of the light? Well, if the frequency stays the same, it's going to have the same color. Um, it's just the wavelength that's going to that's going to change. Um, and then with that change in wavelength. Um, the speed changes, right? And so if, if the wavelength, let's say, gets smaller, uh, the frequency stays the same, the speed of light is going to be smaller. They correspond to each other. Or if the wavelength is longer, the speed of light is going to be faster. Uh, 